Hello. Today we are getting to know the promised finishing of items woven in the wrapping technique. Let me show you a few options. The first one is lace edging like this. It is an old item woven long ago. As for this item it has been made while shooting the previous tutorial on the wrapping technique. Now it's time to get to know how to finish it. So I woven the item of the required shape. Now let's pass on to the last finishing row. I take two tubes of the base, adjoin them and start wrapping them with a working tube. I've marked the points of joining a lacy element to the base beforehand. The allocation depends on the pattern you've woven and the number of wrapping sections. In my case you can see a dense interval like this followed by a segment of wrapping. A segment of short and long coils alternating, then short coils again. These are the very points I'm going to emphasize. So I'm performing short coils hanging. I take into account the intervals I've got. After the first section it's going to be clearer how to calculate the intervals further. I don't like a loop too big. This size is quite sufficient. So I've got 13 coils. Take a note please that my loop is a bit too loose so far because I'm going to fasten it with the help of a double coil in the last row. So far it remains loose. So I'm performing the first stitch before the last section here. Then a short coil. Well, actually different options are possible. You don't necessarily have to place a section the way I do. It's up to you to choose depending on your pattern. As for me, I've decided to do this way. Continue. Make 13 more short coils after fastening the loop. In order to get smooth waves of the same size, I'm performing an identical number of coils every time. But you can make different number of coils every time and get waves of different size for a change. As a result, after I fasten the loop here, I'm going to get a wavy or lacy edge like this. Another option of edging is like this. It is a bit similar to the so-called Italian edge in a traditional weaving technique. Well, I believe experienced weavers can master it by pictures, but I'm going to show the way I perform it for newcomers. In my case, I've got four tubes of the base in the last finishing row. I wrap them by pairs. So I wrap the pair. You have to mark the points of joining these wrapped tubes to the base beforehand.
So, perform this V. I've already stitched the, the twisted pair for the first time. In this case, I'm stitching the pair with a single coil. In the previous item, I performed strong fastening with a few stitches. You can see two long stitches and a short one between them. In this case, I've decided to do with a single stitch, in order to avoid an item too massive. So, two twists of our improvised roots. And stitch it to the item with the help of a working tube. So, I've inserted the tube I'm going to stitch the roots with under the last row. Here you can fasten it with the help of a drop of glue. And perform such a stitch. Let's lengthen the tubes of the base. Try your best to avoid lengthening all the basic tubes at the same level. Do it at different levels. So I lengthen the tubes of the base. Let's continue normal wrapping in order to twist the wrapped tubes later. In this case, I'm using Universal Polymeric Adhesive Dragon in order to be able to continue working without waiting for the glue to get dry. Besides, this type of glue is stronger and more reliable for the item subject to much twisting and bending. Help yourself with clothing clips. Wrap the second root in the same very way. After that, let's try the roots to each other to see whether it is enough or do you have to make more coils in order to perform the next twist and stitch it to the item. So, as I've decided beforehand, I'm going to perform two twists. Here's the point of joining to the item. In order to make it convenient to stitch, let's continue wrapping the section for a little while. And continue this way up to the end of the row. Let me show you the way I stitch the roots to the item in detail once again. I finished wrapping. Let's fasten the tube. Lay the working tube under the last row. Lay the wrapped roots carefully. Now my task is fastening this working tube thoroughly in order to prevent it from sliding away. Let's do it this way with the help of glue. Continue. Perform a stitch. Here's a challenging point, leading a tube through again. I've done. Let's continue shaping the seam carefully. Now from the opposite side, I'm just leading it through. It goes through easily.
Later I'm going to glue and cut the tails. I've already cut long tails, however left some stops in order to cut them carefully after gluing. Here's another stitch. I'm going to continue this way up to the rear end. So it is a so-called root-styled edging. Here's the edging option I personally like most of all. It is a normal tight wrapping. Here, as you can see, I've got many short coils. However, in the last row I've passed on to tight wrapping consisting of one long coil and one short coil alternating. As for me, this type of edging is rather nice looking. Here I've used a bit different option, two long coils and two short ones. In my sample item I've got five short coils and one short sorry, five short coils and one long coil. I mean there can be many possible options. However, what I'd like to show you is how to adjoin handles to the edge like this. Well, at least the way I've done. I've seen the picture on the internet and I felt like doing it this way. Let me share my option of adjoining handles. So I've woven the item spiral-like, instead of weaving and joining every following row separately. Upon reaching the required height of the item, I'm passing on to handles. For this purpose, in order to get the handle symmetric, I mark the point to start shaping handles. Another point 5 cm further and two more points on the opposite side at the same interval 5 cm or about 2 inches. These are the points to adjoin handles. This item is bigger than the previous one, so it may be used for keeping something heavier than just bread or sweets, fruit for example. That's why, in order to make the handle stronger, I've added one more tube to the two I've already got. I've just stuck it with some glue. I'd like my handles to be dark in color, so I'm using dark tubes, not the yellow ones. Lengthen the tube. In the previous tutorial I've already shown you how to lengthen the tube in order to make the joint invisible. And start performing the normal short wrapping technique. One stitch is not enough here, so in order to fasten the tube in the point of lengthening, I decided to make such a lock consisting of a short, sorry, long, short and long coil again. After which I continue normal short wrapping. The second long coil is meant to make the point of handle joining stronger. My tubes have been prepared in an unusual way. I've done it for the first time. Many of you must have heard already of plasticine tubes. Thanks a lot to all the viewers who share their experience. I do my best and try new improvements. I really enjoy working with the tubes like this. I'll share the link to the video that has inspired me. Well, I did hear about plasticine tubes before, but it is this video that has made me try. I'm quite satisfied and I'm planning working this way on. I had some old tubes coated with normal mixture of colorant, water and some varnish long ago. I used to add two or three spoons of varnish to half a liter of water 
just in order to prevent colorant from painting my fingers. So I've taken such tubes, wrapped them with a piece of cloth and covered with a mixture of water and varnish half to half. Five spoons of liquid water-based acrylic varnish and about five spoons of water, maybe a little more. So I've covered the tubes with this mixture. Left them for a minute to soak the solution and dry them with a dryer. Switch to maximum power. After which I've placed them on a tree. It hasn't taken much time, but has made the tubes very comfortable to work with. So I like them this way a lot and planning to use the recipe on. Thanks a lot to all of you who share your experience. Continue wrapping the handle this way up to the required length. Now it's high time to make use of our marks made with clothing clips. So I've made the handle of required height and now I'm leading it to the clothing clip opposite to it. I've got some curve. In this point I join the tubes and weave one more row of normal wrapping. Get rid of one of the tubes. Since I've got two tubes in the base, I've got to cut the third tube in order to make the last row correspond to the previous rows. And continue wrapping, hugging the last row with a working tube. So we bowing the row, alternating short and long coils corresponding to the pattern and reach the closing clip. I mean I've connected the tube to the opposite point, woven the row and reach the closing clip. Now my task is weaving the second section of the handle and connecting it to the point across cornerwise and weaving one more row till the point where we started shaping a handle. As a result I've got such a curve. After making the second part of the handle, we'll see whether to twist the tubes or leave them the way they are. Take one more note, please. While in the rest of the row I've made single long stitches, in the point of connecting the handle I make a double stitch. Now let's connect one more tube of the base to the second long stitch and start wrapping the second part of a handle. So I've woven the row, wrapped the handle of required, required length. Now it's time to connect it to the point where a closing clip is. Let's make twisting cause it doesn't look too nice if just a joint. So I already tried and I like it when there are many twists. Well, I believe it's enough. And lay the handle in the point where a closing clip was attached, at the interval of 5 cm, which is about 2 inches. Lay the handle, 
We'll get an opportunity to smoothen the handle later while varnishing and priming. And weave the second half of the row. Here, after we weave the row up to the end, it will be finished. So, the last row is finished. Since this type of weaving is double-sided, I will win this part from inside, in this direction. It is easier for me this way. Now here, in the point of handle lifting, it is easy to bring the tubes of the base to nothing. Wrap them very carefully in order to make the point of finishing as little visible as possible. This way, reach the handle with long stitches. Wrap carefully. Lead the tube here, for example. And fasten the tail carefully. Inserting it through this loop, for example. Take a look, please. As a result, the transition is almost invisible, due to the lifting, and I've got such an item. So, I proposed you three options of finishing the items made in the technique of wrapping. Well, I believe there can be much more of them. The more options there are, the merrier. May you enjoy your imagination, your ideas and making them true. All the best to you!